Making this one simple change to this setup has dramatically lowered the nitrate levels. But there's a bigger lesson we need to learn here that if we don't learn, could kill our fish. Well, this tank has been set up for over a year now, and for most of that time, it has not needed a water change because these riparian plants are feeding on the fish waste. But a few months ago, I started having problems with the nitrates getting too high. I did a few water changes, but they were still building up too high. So, what's been missing here? Well, I want to tell you about one change I made to this setup that caused the nitrates to drop so low they don't even show up on the water test anymore. But after I tell you about this change I made, we need to discuss a bigger problem that needs to be addressed if I want to keep these fish from dying. When I first built this tank, I set up this flexible LED uh, aquarium light for the plants and it worked fine while the plants were small, but they eventually outgrew this light source. And this room does get some natural daylight, enough for the plants to grow, but even though the plants were growing, I began to notice the nitrate levels creeping up too high. And for many months, I did zero water changes on this tank and the nitrate levels were always very, very low. I thought, what's going on? So I did a few water changes, but I wasn't getting to the root of the problem. So at this point, I suspected maybe these plants aren't getting enough light to really do well. But these are supposed to be low light plants. You're supposed to do well even in, in low light condition. I went ahead and added two clamp on work lights with standard household LED light bulbs. And I've been letting them run about eight to 10 hours per day. Over the course of several weeks, I noticed a dramatic increase in the growth of these plants, especially the neon pothos, the phytonia, and the peace lily, whose leaves have also deepened in color. Now, at the time that I added the extra lights, I also added some guppy grass with, to help with nitrate absorption, which has helped some. It's growing a little bit, but not nearly as much as these riparian plants have. And it's not surprising because submerged aquatic plants feeding from the water column just can't compete with riparian plants whose roots are in the water but with the leaves above the water surface they have more access to light and co2 which means they are photosynthesizing more efficiently which means they are feeding on those nitrates and other forms of nitrogen more effectively but wait hold on aren't these plants like pothos peace lily and parlor palm supposed to be low light plants they can grow almost anywhere well yes that is true but there's still a level of light that they need in order to be effective as riparian plants they need to be growing at a rate which keeps up with the supply of the fish waste the nutrients and nitrates in the tank so adding these lights making this one simple change to this setup has dramatically lowered the nitrate levels but there's a bigger lesson we need to learn here that if we don't learn could kill our fish it would have been easy for me to assume that because the plants look okay they look reasonably healthy they're growing they must be feeding on the nitrates effectively when in fact they were not feeding on the nitrates effectively because of the previous lighting conditions the plants looked okay but they were growing too slowly to keep up with the supply of the nitrates and that's just not always noticeable. You see the same tank day after day, you become accustomed to the rate of growth, it becomes normal. And if I had noticed how slow they were growing, it would have been easy to assume, well, maybe they're not getting enough nitrates. Maybe I need to add some fertilizer, which could have overwhelmed the system with nitrogen, led to an ammonia spike, and led to sick or dead fish. While adding the lights solved the existing problem of the rising nitrates, the bigger lesson here is if I had not been testing the water on a regular basis, I would not have even known about the rising nitrates and my fish could have potentially died. Water testing is especially important in a riparium where you're trying to reduce or even eliminate water changes. You can't just assume that the plants are dealing with those high nitrates. You need to test and be sure that they are. And I'm talking to myself here too. I mean, I know how important water testing is, but the fact is, sometimes I get lazy or just complacent. 
I can fall into a habit of not testing the water like I should. Personally, I tend to be more diligent with newer tanks, newer setups that are unbalanced and things can change quickly, so I gotta keep a close eye on it. But with older, more established tanks, it's easy to get lazy, just get comfortable. It's easy for me to not test. So let's always be testing our water. Even if everything about your tank looks fine, one minor change in the environment, like a slow reduction in light over time, like I shared earlier, can cause those nitrates to start building up. And you just don't know what's happening if you don't test for it. And you don't need the most high-tech or expensive testing equipment in order to accomplish this. I personally use these simple, inexpensive test strips and they test ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, water hardness, pH, all on one strip. One thing I do to save money is I, I'll cut these strips in half. It gives me twice the amount of tests. lasts me that much longer. Other people have other ways of testing. That's fine, too. The point is to just have a reliable system in place and just do it consistently. Something else that can show you if your nitrates are rising too high is a sudden growth of algae in your tank. So if you do slack off on water testing, but then you notice a flush of new algae growth in your tank, that can be indicative of the system being out of balance and reminds you to test your water. These kinds of issues can seem too simple to be so significant. I mean, plants need light to grow. We test our water for high nitrates. These are really just common sense solutions to the problem but it's easy to overlook the simple, basic, yet crucial steps that we need to take in order to maintain a balanced ecosystem. Most of the life in these tanks, what happens without us, and it's, it's easy to overthink the problem and run to the most complicated solutions first. Well, it must be a shortage of this species of bacteria or micronutrient deficiency. I need this product for that. You know, these things do happen. But if we start with the simple solutions, I think we are likely to find our best answer, in my opinion. If we can remember to provide the basics for life, like adequate light for plants to grow, and if we can remember to do the mundane tasks, like testing water on a regular basis, most of the time, these kinds of simple solutions are likely to be the answer that we're looking for.